Hi y'all, I'm Mary Lou Pearl, Blake out of drag. I'm 32 years old and I live in San Francisco, California, but I grew up outside of Atlanta, Georgia. I think that, you know, self-love and knowing yourself is something that I would imagine most people aspire or would like to get to, but it's so hard when in many ways the deck is stacked against you, especially as a young person in those formative years when you're finding out who you are and developing your identity. But certainly growing up queer in a conservative environment was very hard and being in a religious environment where, you know, I was told that I was evil or bad and was going to hell and that these people didn't even want me to be in the building anymore once I came out. And so there were some tough years there. I mean, I, you know, briefly was in conversion therapy, um, which was clearly unsuccessful, but very traumatizing. My name is Andrew Munns. My pronouns are he, him, and I am 34 years old. I grew up in a very rural place. Uh, Wyoming is the least populated state. It was, I felt very cut off from so much of what people in cities, you know, experience. And, and honestly, drag for me was something that I, like, only knew of as a thing to make fun of because I was surrounded by so many like kind of hyper-masculine cowboy types or like that kind of more conservative mentality. Growing up in a small town, growing up gay, growing up a child of immigrants, I always felt very different. I feel like those differences were on display a lot because I was a bit flamboyant as a kid. I've learned so much in doing drag about myself, about my queerness, about my gender expression and identity and I think it's a gift that drag has given me, just this ability to experiment with that and play with that and honestly unlearn so much of those messages that I heard growing up about like the way that boys are supposed to act or what's acceptable and what's not, what will make you lovable. Oh, no one wants to date a drag queen, that's, no one's into that. And it's like, well then I don't want to date them. You know what I mean? Like, you mean you could get Blake and all of this? Like, you get double. You know, I found that there's a current, a kind of queer current and it feels really good to kind of fall into that rather than being the person who's the rock in the straight current <laughs> where I'm from. Starting drag took so long because the whole way I was like, oh, this doesn't feel right, this isn't like what I'm supposed to be doing, this is like wrong. And I think through living in San Francisco and making friends here and honestly seeking out therapy for myself, I finally got to a place where I could say, this is fine. Like this gender stuff is all made up anyways. Like all these rules are fake. And honestly, I've been restricting myself and muting myself and not being the best version of myself just to make these people happy. And like, why am I doing that? Like, it just, does, it's not worth it, you know? So in October of this year, I just did a show in Jackson uh, called Cowboys Like Us. I wrote a uh, gay cowboy drag queen fairy tale musical. <laughs> and um, we had to figure out how to dress nine drag performers and so we needed to get costumes for these people. I have a good friend, she is my roommate, her name's Ariana, she's amazing. She was looking for drag stores and she found Piedmont Boutique. She sent me photos from inside and I was just like, yes, yes, get everything we need here. Everyone calls me by the name of Uti. I'm the owner for 49 years plus here and I'm a couture maker. Being on 18th and Castro was the beginning of the drag queen phenomena of being openly able to walk up the street in a, in a dress or the way you wanted or anything like that. Even in those days, there is a bar on the corner still of uh, Twin Peaks. They still had to have their curtains closed at that time that the outside couldn't view people who were dressing up as they wanted until Stonewall, which had happened, I guess, 1968, 69 in New York. Then it slowly became, it was illegal not to be able to walk up the street in a dress. Looking at drag with roots in entertainment, it was also an outlet for people who we didn't have words for at the time. Drag is one of those pieces of, of LGBTU history that kind of it holds so much of it together because it, it, it represents community, it represents identity. And the clients I have are always ready for a good time. They're not getting ready for a funeral, but some 
maybe want to dress up for a funeral, but uh, they're, they're happy, they're wanting to look good, and they're wanting to feel good and be able to express themselves however they want to express themselves. There is so much to be said for dressing the way you want to be perceived. Finding clothes that, that speak to you and, and kind of build a character for yourself. I think for drag queens, clothes are one of the characters in the show that the drag queen is bringing. You know, one thing that someone said to me years ago was like, the things that make you weird or different um, often end up being the things that are most exciting and are most special about you. Just knowing that like the space that you're in now is not where you're going to be forever and you can seek out other communities and people that will support you. Sometimes that means leaving folks behind. You, you know, just have to know that there are other places where you'll be loved and accepted. Being a part of the gay community, I realize that we have a lot of enemies binding together and um, embracing our differences. It's giving us more visibility, it's giving us more power, more people can hear us and more people are paying attention and we're learning how to you know learn from each other's history whether that's you know lesbians taking care of AIDS patients or somebody like Udi who was like dressing drag queens you know during the time of Harvey Milk. Wow if like scared closeted 14 year old Blake could see where all this ended up and how happy I am now, he wouldn't believe it.